and she says, what's pasta? It's macaroni. <laughs> you have to call it macaroni. It's macaroni. In a pot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Jasmine and Chris. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're actually going to be showing you how to make some homemade vegan pasta, which is so exciting. It turned out so good and I can't wait for you to try it. You can use this pasta recipe to make any shape of noodle that you'd like. And we're actually gonna be making a ravioli today that's gonna be stuffed with a ricotta herb filling. Herb ricotta filling. Yes. <laughs> Today's video is also sponsored by friends over at Garden. We will be talking more about them as the video goes on. And we also have a special guest today joining us. I don't know where she's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> My mom! Hi! Yay. Say hello to everybody. Hi everybody. Thank my, you for inviting me back. Thanks for coming on our channel. We're really excited for this video. Yep, my mom has made a few recipes with us in the past and it's been a lot of fun. So thanks for coming back. You yeah, drove all the way from Jersey. Just to be here to make pasta. For real. <laughs> <laughs> So let's just get this video started. So the first thing we're going to do is prep our filling. We're going to be making a homemade vegan ricotta out of tofu. We're good. We're good out of tofu. How do you say it? Ricotta. 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 <laughs> so we are using tofu as our base today and we've actually used this recipe in a ton of different pasta dishes on our channel. You may have seen it before. Lasagna, stuffed shells, uh, big ziti. Yeah, I think that's how we use yeah. it for. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, and pizza. We use it on a pizza too. You can see that link down below for our white pizza. Um, but it's very versatile and we are making an herbed ricotta today, but you can make the general base and if you want to use it for a sweet recipe, you can modify it from there. Um, just play around with it and have fun. So let's get started. We're going to be adding in a firm block of tofu and you don't need to press this. You're going to just take it out of the package and drain the water and then just break it up into your food processor. Then we have some nutritional yeast for a cheesy flavor, some olive oil, salt, some fresh garlic, lemon juice, miso paste which will give it that savory umami flavor, and some black pepper. We're going to pulse this together until everything is well combined and it's nice and fluffy. You don't want this to be a puree, this is the consistency you're looking for. Next up we have some freshly chopped herbs from our garden. Like we mentioned in the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by our friends over at Garden, G-A-R-D. Y N. We have talked about them a ton on our Instagram if you follow us there and it is our indoor garden system. We are absolutely obsessed with it. It is a hydroponic system and what's really cool is all you have to do is pop in these little pods into the garden and it basically takes it from there. It's all automated so it'll water it for you. It'll give it the proper amount of light and the light will change through the growth cycle of the plants. and just super easy. You just watch it grow every single day. It is so cool to see and you have fresh herbs, fresh lettuce, kale, whatever you plant in it, you will have it growing in your living room or wherever you set it up in your house. And they're always adding different plant varieties as well. So there's a ton of different things to choose from and you can always change things up for your next order. And we have a $200 discount code in the description box down below. So if you want to check it out, I would highly recommend it. This garden system is great if you live in a climate where you can't have an outdoor garden or if you live in a small space and you still want to grow your own food, you can do it at home. So we're adding three different herbs here. We have some fresh basil and then we have some thyme and oregano. And we don't want to fully blend those in. What we're going to do is basically just pulse those in just until they're incorporated and then we're done. Now we're going to mix out the dough. I have my mother here to help us out. Uh, this is just three simple ingredients and then water. Is that three or four? What would you say? It depends on who you're asking. <laughs> Three to four ingredients. We're gonna add some double zero flour to a large bowl. And then we also have some semolina flour we're gonna add. And then we're just gonna whisk this all together until it's fully combined. My mom's been showing me all the tips and tricks to- uh -huh. I reached out to a very good friend of mine, Debbie. And from Shout Tucson. out Debbie, Tucson. And she sent, was kind enough to send her recipe. And I also reached out to my cousin, Valerie. Shout out Valerie. Yeah, Valerie and I and all my cousins used to sit and watch my grandmother and all my aunts and my mom make raviolis in my grandmother's kitchen, small kitchen in the Bronx. I can't believe that everyone fit in there and worked together. Shout out the Bronx. <laughs> and they had these big, long tables. They would make um, roll out ravioli with long sticks that we used to call broomsticks. I hope they weren't really broomsticks, but it was fun memories. Good memories. And we used to play with the scraps from the ravioli cutting. 
Good times. So we veganized a few recipes. Well, we combined a few recipes, veganized it, and here we are. They created their own recipe. This is theirs. It'll be linked down below yes. if you want to check it out. So we're going to just carve out a little well. And now we have some just egg here. We're replacing regular eggs with this liquid egg substitute. You can do it with just water, but we found that it tastes a lot better with the just egg. So um, all of the instructions for just the water version or just the wheat and water version will be in the description. So we're just gonna add that in. It tasted good. We just had this one first. So. That's true. <laughs> we were spoiled. And then we're just gonna use a fork to get the dough going here. And then we're gonna use the fork until we can't use the fork anymore, right mom? Yeah, and then you're gonna turn it out onto a floured surface. Wow. You used to help your grandma make this? I helped as much as she would let me help. I you mostly got my own dough to play with. Like play dough. Right, and watched, I watched a lot. Would your grandma just measure it all by feel? Would she not? Everything, use? nothing was ever used um, with a measuring cup. Wow. My, even my cousin Valerie was taught, we were on the phone for about an hour, just reminiscing and she was saying how her mom would just dump flour out onto the counter, boom, out of the bag. And just go. And, and just go. Wow. And she says, what's pasta? It's macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> you have to call it macaroni. It's macaroni. In a pot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably about as good as we can get it with the fork, right? You can start using your hands. And clean hands. Impeccably clean hands. Better be. <laughs> Somebody once commented on my Instagram saying I always had dirty hands. No way. Not mm -mm. Uh, All I responded was WTF and then they <laughs> deleted it. So if you're watching, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands are clean. So now we have some lukewarm water here and we're just gonna slowly add it until our dough kind of forms the way we want it to. So as, just, as my mom was saying, it's a lot of feel. You gotta feel this out. Right, there's no hard fast rule because moisture changes in different environments. You so you on, keep, keep doing on. it until it's a dough that feels really nice and smooth. You can always add more flour or more water. Chris has the strongest hands. That's why That's he's why I'm doing it. A my more my water. cousin Owe also said you can use the, um, she uses her dough hook. Mm. Oh, in the So if you have a KitchenAid, make this a little bit easier. We're, we're taking it, we're doing it old school today. Absolutely. This is more fun, I think. It's, best, it, it's so much fun to make. We were doing this the other night, we had a party, basically. Don't miss out. <laughs> Get your whole family involved. It seems like a lot of work, but the actual and Reward. product cooks in two minutes. Starting to get tired here. Our macaroni. Can you move it a little forward again? There? Uh, a little like diagonal towards your mom facing me. A little to the right, your, my right. Keep going. It's like a Ouija board. Keep going. And a little tiny bit towards you, yourself. There you go. I feel like that's where it started. Next we're gonna flour a clean work surface and then we're gonna transfer the dough from the bowl onto that surface and just give it a good knead. Ooh, this is my workout for the day, after my jump rope. I was gonna say. <laughs> How long should we knead this? Uh, I would say until it feels soft and pliable. I think this is it. I think you can let it rest now. All right. And you wanna cover it with a... Mm, Mopping. Mopping. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna add this back into our bowl, cover it with a mopping. Clean, lint-free. Clean, lint-free, so no fuzzies. And we'll let that sit for about 15 minutes. You wanna explain the mop bean? Go ahead. That's what we call dish towels. Simple as that. Our next the dog is gonna be named Mop Bean. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> After 15 minutes, we're gonna uncover our dough and then using a bench scraper, we're just gonna cut a small piece off and we're just gonna cut little pieces as we go. And for the dough we're not using, just make sure it's covered in the bowl. Now we're gonna lay out some lint-free dish towels and lightly flour them. Now it's time to roll out our dough. So we're gonna be using a pasta ma machine here. Pasta, what, what's the official name for this? A pasta machine. Pasta machine. You can also roll it out by hand. My family rolled it out by hand with long dowels. A little more tedious and you can't get it as thin, especially with ravioli. We're trying to get a nice, long, thin sheet. And, and it's fun to crank the pasta machine. It is, so if you have one of these, Definitely recommend it. If not, get your broomstick and roll it out. <laughs> so we're gonna start on zero that's, for the pasta machine. That's the thickest setting. 
And we're just gonna take our little piece of dough and start to roll through. Your dough should not feel like it's sticking in the machine. It should glide through. Glide it through. And you can also put some flour on like the sheet it, very as lightly. necessary. And we're gonna roll this sheet through on zero a few more times. How many, Mom, officially? You can do three times, four times. And now we're gonna fold the ends in and then run it through on zero one more time. This is just gonna help get the shape that we want for the sheet. So it's more even. Beautiful. Okay. And now we bring it down to one. We're gradually going from the thickest to almost the thinnest setting. We're gonna stop at seven and we're on one right now. Now we go to two. Definitely helps to have more than one person to do this. You can flour, lightly flour your dough through each setting if you feel it's not sticking. gliding through. Right. It starts to get very delicate after a little mm -hmm. while. Concentration. This is serious. It's quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, you're making spaghetti or if you want lasagna sheets or if you're gonna make linguine, you can stop at five, setting five. But because we want a nice thin dough for the ravioli, we're gonna go to seven. And as this seven. goes, it's harder to hold it with your fingers, what so we can I do, like to fold it. What we can do also is cut it in half and run half through, because we're gonna need two sheets for ravioli. Should we do that? Let's do it. Okay. Make it easy. Oh. <laughs> it really feels like pasta now. So now we're on six. Crank that soldier boy. You gotta start using your arms. I know. This is great to get into with everyone in the family, all the kids. Full activity. And now we're family at seven. Family fun. Here we go. Off their phones. Really? <laughs> the final roll. And they'll eat what they make or they'll eat what they grow. They reap what they sow. Is that the right saying? Sure. <laughs> Really thin. Wow. It got so long. I know. That's wow, beautiful. All right, there it is. We should just cook that noodle like that. Right. In the water. We can make a whole bunch of these and make a big lasagna. We'll make manicotti. <laughs> 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 so now it's time to stuff and oh. cut. You did Ready? it. <laughs> Before you cut your, you want to lay your sheets out on a floured surface. The other day we did it without flouring the board yeah. and it was not fun. We made it work. It worked, but all the little raviolis got all messed up when we were like scraping them off. Cooking is an imperfect science <laughs> and once it's served, no one will ever know you made a mistake. Tastes the same. So about a teaspoon with a little help. And for the width of the, these sheets, we can fit about two in each row. So we are using a press today. This is an annellini press, is that how you say it? An mm -hmm. Annellini. So that's what that's what she's saying, the width of it, so we can put two on it. But if you are gonna be cutting, I guess, if you're you cutting cut it by two hand. as well. You can even make giant raviolis, right? Right. <laughs> so if you, if you cut by hand, you wanna crimp around your edges with a little fork or something. You can make them as small or as big as you like. I've even seen those ravioli things that are like, it looks like an ice. Right, they uh, sell them ice in wood. Yeah, yeah. those are cool. They are cool, I always wanted one. And we're placing these about, I don't know, an inch. Away from each other? About an inch. Yeah, and, I would and, say about and an And then inch. from here to here is a... I would say like two, maybe two. Two inches. Feel it out. If you need to, you could practice on the end of the sheet with your press just to make sure before you do the whole thing. And that way you can, you'll know how far, how close you could put things. So we're using an annellini press, but they refer to annellini as these dumplings or raviolis cooked in, filled with the meat, oh, the meat yeah. broth. and cooked soup. in broth like a soup. The story behind this press is I actually saw someone making this on Instagram with this shape and I sent it to Julie. And I was like, we should try this. And then Julie ordered everything and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a reason to shop. <laughs> That's straight out of Italy, that press too, right? Right. Wow. Straight out of Italy. It's so, so really is the maker. Cool. And so is the guitar. guitar. La we gandola. Oh yeah, what is the guitar? The guitar is an instrument 
that's specific to the region in Italy where my grandparents are from. It's an instrument or a ma pasta maker? Or it's a it's pasta instrument. maker, but it has um, wire string. It looks like an instrument, a musical instrument. Right. And my grandmother made spaghetti on it, macaroni. <laughs> so you put, the way it works, you put the sheet on it, right? And you you like put the sheet it? on it and you use a rolling pin. Oh, and, and, and then there's a board through. underneath and it slides out. To catch the noodles, mm -hmm. wow. So I used to sit in the kitchen with my grandmother and watch her do this. And the, and the device just fascinated me. So when this came up, I thought of that. This is very therapeutic. It really is. And don't worry, you can't do it wrong. Ooh. See? <laughs> You're making a mess. Schmutz. <laughs> Schmutz everywhere. It'll be on all over my, me as well. <laughs> We're wearing white, we gotta be careful. Once it well, comes to the sauce. I wore white because I knew I was gonna be covered in flour. <laughs> you wanna do this, this Jasmine? We're gonna lay, lay this your, over. Your top sheet, and then you can press it in a little to get the air out around your little balls, balls of filling. But really your press is gonna do all the work. Unless you're cutting it by hand, but that's no problem either. Okay, cut away. All right, I'm in charge of cutting. I'm nervous right now. You can't be, you can't do anything wrong. This thing is really cool. If you see, uh, this is, the, the on the outside it cuts it and then the inside, depending on, I guess, how much filling it, like pushes it up. I don't know how to explain it. It's so cool, okay. And the shape is just so pretty. Little suns. So you're, all you really have to do is just put it on to the dough and press. Put some muscle into it. And then, beautiful. What do you think, Julie? I'm excited. <laughs> Who doesn't want to eat that? I know, I'm so excited. And this rigotte recipe, ricotta recipe. Say it like the Italian-American. <laughs> is just incredible. You, your guests, your family, if they're not vegan, will never know. We fooled Dom's family. Wow, they're, they're tough critics, today. yeah. You made them ravioli? We made them Stuffed shells, your stuffed shell uh -huh. recipe. Those got eaten quicker, right? They did. Wow, that's really cool. And see that it's since it's floured, they're all coming off nicely and it's retaining the shape. If it wasn't, it wouldn't end well. So you want to move these <laughs> to a floured surface and they should dry out before you cook them for a little bit. You know, you can make, let, leave them for a half hour. And then if you wanted to freeze these, what I, would we freeze it uncooked? I would freeze them on, uncooked on a lined sheet tray. Just put the tray in the freezer and then bag them up when they're frozen. And when the kids come home from school, Pop you have dinner ready. Wow. Once you have formed all of your ravioli, it's really simple from here. You just have to cook them in a pot of boiling salted water until they all start floating to the top. It should take around two minutes and then we're just going to add our favorite sauce on top and we dressed ours with some vegan Parmesan and some fresh parsley from our garden and we're ready to dig in. Oh, look how tall I look. Look at those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Julie's got her heels on for this. That's hilarious. All right, we worked hard on these and now we're gonna eat. Let's dig in. I'm excited. So you could really use whatever sauce you want for this. We just went with a classic red sauce. Marinara. Marinade. Marinade. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Wow. We've made this with dried herbs before, but the fresh herbs, oh my God, it takes it to the next level. It's so good. We chopped it with parsley. That's also from it's our garden. And I feel like it tastes better than store-bought. Like it feels more fresh. The parsley. Tastes, yeah, the yeah, parsley. Yeah, totally. These Has raviolis are not just beautiful. They are so delicious. And hearing that come from Julie means it's really good. Because <laughs> Julie's had a lot of pasta in her day. You know what? I'm always in the mood for ravioli. That's for sure. <laughs> They're great for breakfast cold. Mm. Wow. Ravioli casserole. <laughs> oh, we've done here. that. Yeah. Mm. Fried ravioli mm. Ooh. with a dipping sauce. Ooh. Do you bread it or do you just... Yeah, bread it. Wow, we should do that. Put it, down. Put it in a sandwich. Have a cocktail Put party with ravioli. yourself. <laughs> dip it in pesto, dip it in red sauce. Just Boom. have fun. Possibilities are endless. Possibilities. Wow. I, I feel like I'm on TikTok with this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so that is all from us today. We really hope you enjoyed this video and that you can try this recipe out. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Say hey. And also, if you're interested in that garden system, you can use our code down below. I'm getting one. You actually are, aren't you? I really think that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you soon, and we love you. Bye.